We will now present Weaver's formula as a further application of Taylor series. Those of you who are going to go to on to take differential equations, we'll end up making heavy use of this formula. Euler's formula is to do with the imaginary unit, the number that has the property that its square is negative one. And in particular, we're going to use Euler's formula to rewrite exponential expressions where the imaginary unit i is in the exponent. How are we going to do that? We'll start by recalling that the exponential function always equals its Taylor series. And this is composition that can be done in the natural way. When you have a product, like I theta raised to a power like two, that's the same as raising each factor to the power. So you see I've broken these powers apart. I theta squared is I squared theta squared. I theta cubed is I cubed theta cubed and so on. What are these powers of I? Well, I to the first is I. I squared is negative one. I cubed is I squared times I, so negative I. I to the fourth is I cubed times I, so negative, negative one, so positive one. I to the fifth is I fourth times I. And now this pattern will repeat. We multiply by I, we go from I to negative one. We multiply by I again, we go from negative one to negative I. We multiply by i again, we go from negative i to positive one, and so forth. So these powers of i are these four terms repeated over and over again. So we see that every other term has the imaginary unit I attached to it. And that's because of this pattern. I know I, I know I, repeated over and over. When Taylor series converge, which this does everywhere, they converge absolutely, meaning that we can rearrange our terms and treat this infinite sum as a finite sum. In particular, we can gather together 
all of the terms that have an I in them. So here are all the terms that don't have the imaginary unit I in them. And as for the terms that do have the imaginary unit I, we'll pull it out. So we've broken this infinite series into the sum of two infinite series. And this infinite series and this infinite series are McLaurin series that we have seen before. This infinite series, the terms that aren't being multiplied by I, are the McLaurin series of the cosine, this infinite series, the terms that are being multiplied by I, are the McLaurin series of the sine. And that gives us this incredibly important formula. We use it all the time in the field of differential equations. E to the I theta equals the cosine of theta plus sort of tripped at the finish line there. The cosine of theta plus I times the sine of theta.